How do you provide pushback for elements of anti-racism without being accused of being racist? That's really difficult. In this video, I'm going to attempt to walk you through a few tips on how you can give pushback to some of the ideas being promoted right now without being accused of being racist. The concept of anti-racism in its modern form, Ibram Kendi's ideas, Robin DiAngelo's ideas, these promote the idea that you are either racist or anti-racist. And the methods to be anti-racist are the ones that they say. There are people who are anti-racist who were very critical of Daryl Davis, the most anti-racist person that probably walks the earth. Essentially, part of the ideology is what is called a Kafka trap, which is if you disagree with the anti-racist literature, then you are inherently racist. So you cannot disagree with it without being called a racist, which in the modern day, being called a racist is one of the worst things you can be called. It's almost like being called a pedophile or something like that. So the idea that you would get defensive when being called racist makes sense. It's not white fragility. It's just don't call me something that's terrible that I'm not. So how do you navigate this world? For teachers out there, there's gonna be a lot of anti-racism professional development coming your way. Lots of corporations have intrinsic bias training and anti-racist trainings and things like that that promote these ideas that aren't great. So what do you do? How can you give pushback? And I have had many, many teachers and individuals in corporate America write to me and say, I am so scared, but I don't like what this stuff is promoting. Can you help me? So I'm gonna walk through a couple of steps for how you can push back against these ideas and not be accused of being racist. The first one, don't be racist. That's pretty important because if you are racist, then them calling you racist kind of makes sense. So what does racist mean? Well, you have to have a clear definition. And there are different definitions out there now, but I tend to go with the traditional definition of you believe that people are inferior or superior because of their race, that they are less than because of their race. There are other definitions like it is privilege plus power or something like that, but that gets really, really tricky. And for the sake of this video, I'm gonna stick with the traditional definition. The real real racism. I don't like you because of your skin color. I think you are worse because of your skin color. That kind of racism. I don't want you working here because of your skin color. I don't want you dating my daughter because of your skin color. That kind of racism. First, you need to come to terms with, are you racist? If you are, then what I suggest is having a lot of conversations and challenging your beliefs. Seek disconfirmation. I always say seek disconfirmation. And when it comes to your racist ideas, try to prove yourself wrong. I am not racist. And the reason is because I'm too logical. It doesn't make sense. It shouldn't take very long if you have racist ideas to prove them wrong and come out on the other side as being not racist. That's the first step, is deal with your own deep prejudices and racist ideas. And by the way, prejudice is different than race. Prejudice is prejudging someone. Is I see that person and I think certain things about them because of whatever, including their race. You judge them before you know them. We all do that. So yes, we are all prejudiced. Racism is knowing that person and using that prejudice, it doesn't change, is believing that they are good or bad because of their race. So there is a difference there. So the first step is work on your own possible racism, if you have it. The second step is read the literature. Read it. Read Ibram Kendi. Read Robin DiAngelo, Kimberly Crenshaw, Peggy McIntosh, Barbara Applebaum, Allison Bailey, Rachel Cargill, and all of the others. Read them. Read what they have to say and understand the way that these ideas are structured. It's kind of a Sun Tzu idea from The Art of War where you should know your opponent as well or better than they know themselves. So if you wanna give pushback to an idea, you need to know that idea really well. And once you know their ideas, you can use those ideas 
in your pushback because the ideology behind a lot of the modern anti-racist movements are just so flawed. There's so many holes, there's so much blatant hypocrisy there that you can use it against itself, which is why you see so much division even among these movements. It's why you see cancel culture hitting everybody no matter what. So what I advocate for is to kind of play dumb which doesn't a, isn't a great phrase, but essentially just be really curious. You are curious, right? You are curious why you're learning this stuff or why we're pushing these ideas. So be curious, be genuine, non-threatening, kind, and just ask about the very blatant hypocrisy. Asking questions like, well, race, if white people are racist no matter what, then why are we even doing this? If I am going to be racist, according to Robin D'Angelo, no matter what, and it's an ongoing lifelong fight to be anti-racist, and there's no end goal, then why are we doing this? Just genuine curiosity, why? There are so many questions you can ask that you probably just have naturally. I also want to say that there are resources out there to help you with this, whether it's through my website or the website New Discourses with Helen Pluckrose and James Lindsay. There's not a lot, but there are some and they will be growing to help you formulate how to take on these ideas. But at the end of the day, no matter how kind you are, how curious, how genuine, how respectful you are, you still might get in trouble for giving pushback. That's kind of what's going on. That's the reason you have the fear. It's the crucible. And you might still get in trouble for offering even very kind pushback to this because in the literature, you cannot push back against it without being a racist. But look, you have to take some chances. If someone accuses me of being a pedophile, I am very, very confident that I am not. So I will have that conversation and I will fight that accusation and we need to approach racism the same way. Be as confident that you are not racist as you are that you aren't a murderer or a Nazi or any other absolutely horrible label that people can put on you, okay? If you're a tall person and someone calls you short, you shouldn't get too offended and vice versa. So instead of going from a place of offense, go from a place of curiosity and always take the high road in the way you interact with people because a lot of this is rooted in the way things feel and not in a logical way to structure society. So you have to go at them from a feeling standpoint. Logic on its own is not going to give any kind of pushback that will get you anywhere. It has to come from a place of genuine curiosity and that's what you're feeling anyway. I hope this helps. Please reach out and I will have more resources on my website that can help you through this.